yourself, man. This is a blast from the past. So just introduce yourself real quick. My name oh. is Taylor. Taylor? Yeah. God, my name is Shirley Phillips. Shirley Phillips. All right. So how do we know each other? You left from church. Left from church, mm -hmm. Southside mm -hmm. Baptist Church in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Southside Baptist Church in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So what are y'all doing these days? Chilling. Chilling, going to church. Going, mm -hmm. Do y'all believe in an afterlife? Mm -hmm. I do. Yes, sir. Believe in heaven and hell? I do. All right. What do you think is going to happen to you the day that you die and stand before God? If you have to put it on a percentage scale where zero percent, you go to hell. A hundred percent, you get into heaven. What do y'all feel like y'all fall at? I die. Yep. I want God. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. All right. What, what do you put it on a percentage scale where zero percent, you go to hell. hundred percent, you get into heaven. Where you feel like you fall? Twenty percent. You about twenty percent hell? <laughs> no, no, no. Ten percent hell or something like that. How about you? Oh, I said about 10%. 10%? Did you get into heaven. heaven? Okay. Do you feel like it's a chance you can go to hell? Yes, sir. It's right. a chance for everybody. Mm -hmm. Say again? Oh, it's a chance for everybody. Oh, All right. It's a chance for everybody. All right. So let's just see how well your chances are. Because eternity is a long time to be wrong. And you don't want to die and be surprised. Would, that, would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let me give you the good person test. Y'all ever heard of the good person test? All right, the good person says, you ever heard of the commandments? The Ten Commandments? Yes, sir, I heard it all. All right, so let me compare you based on the Ten Commandments to see just where you fall at, okay? All right, so I'm not judging you guys, but how many lies have you told in your life combined? What you say? A lie. That's say. What do you call somebody that tell a whole bunch of lies? A liar. A liar. Good answer, good answer. So, that's my wife. Hey, babe. Uh, have you ever stolen something? Yo. Yeah. How about you? I have. Never stole anything? So what do you call somebody that steals? A thief. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's what Jesus said about adultery. He says, you have heard it, it was said that you should not commit adultery. But he raises the standard by saying, but I say to you, if anyone looks at a woman or man to lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Yeah. Have you ever looked at someone with lust or had sex out of marriage or taken sex outside of God's design in any kind of way? Did you say you're guilty? Mm -hmm. All right, me too. I'm with y'all. I'm not just pointing fingers at you guys, okay? Yeah. Have you ever used God's name in vain or used his name to express anger? Like OMG or I put that on G-O-D. But not no motto. No. no, no. Have, have try you done? not to. Okay, try not to. Letters in the middle of the word sin. Uh. So anytime I do what I want to do instead of what God wants me to do, we have just violated God's standard. Would you say you guys are guilty or not guilty? I'm guilty. All right, so that's idolatry. So think about his standard. If you were to stand before God and you were to be judged based on his standard, do you think you'll be innocent or guilty on the day of judgment? Guilty. Be guilty? Yeah, guilty. All right, so what do you think God is going to do to you on the day of judgment if you're guilty? Send you to hell? Mm -hmm. You should, should you? Mm -hmm. you should, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, just to think about it, how much good can this murderer do to the judge to pay him off? C can the yeah. murderer do anything to the judge to pay him off? No. Uh, no, he couldn't. No, okay. The judge rightfully supposed to do what to the murderer? Send him off and uh, blow Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yep. who who killed Jesus? Yes. We did. Yes. So what did we deserve according to the Bible? A consequence. Mm -hmm. A consequence. Mm -hmm. And the consequence for sinning against a holy God is what? Go to hell. Mm -hmm. So does that concern you? That if you die today, you'll go straight to hell? Does that bother you in any kind of way? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Have you, did y'all ever understand that? Does it make sense now? That's true. All right. True. So the bad news is, right now, if you stand before God, and He gave you what you deserve. Where are you gonna spend eternity? Hell. Right. According to what? Hell. According hell. to the standard. Yeah. Would you agree? Right. Totally. All right. But here's the good news. You you was driving down the road, and you accidentally uh, hit somebody because you were speeding and you're driving drunk. You stepped out of the car. Is you asking for forgiveness enough to pay off what you did? I think you. If you ask, if you ask for forgiveness to the judge, would the judge let you go free after no. you? No, uh, uh, no, <laughs> no. Uh, 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 uh. The judge has to do what? Lock you, lock you up. Lock you up, or give you the appropriate uh -huh. punishment. Give you punishment. So let's just say he puts you in an electric chair. So you go out the door. Mm -hmm. All right. Just did. Execution puts his hand on the switch. After ten days, and he's about to flip the switch. And to everybody's surprise, do you remember the judge? They rightfully gave you your sentence. Well, he steps into the room right before the execution is about to flip the switch. And he says, stop the execution. And you're trying to figure out, like, why is this judge here? Mm -hmm. so his wife, with tears in her eyes, wheels in her two-year-old innocent son 
and quickly walks out the room. The judge picks his two-year-old innocent son out of the chair and kisses him one last time and takes his keys out and unhooks both of your arms and tell you to stand next to the chair. So what do you do? Stand next to the chair, right? Mm -hmm. He takes his two-year-old son and he puts his two-year-old son in your place. His two-year-old son in your seat. And he straps his two-year-old son in that chair mm -hmm. and puts the electrical bucket on his two-year-old son's head. What are you thinking right now? He's trying to uh -huh, do something to his son. Kill he's going to kill his son. For what reason? He goes out of the room and he puts his hand on the switch and he executes, son. He he executes his son mm -hmm. for you to murder. The judge comes back in the room, falls on the knees, and he looks at his son that has been burned on your behalf. And he looks at you and he says, do you, would you accept what my son has done in this chair? You only got two choices. You can either accept what the judge has done with, with his son in the chair, or you can reject it. Which one would you do? Reject. You reject it? Why would you reject it? Probably, he, he had nothing to do with it. He had nothing to do with it. But he says, that's the only way you can be made free if you accept it. That's if you accept what his son has done in this chair, the judge says you can walk free because my innocent son has paid your fine. You know why I'm telling you guys that illustration? Uh -huh. If you accept what the judge has done, the judge lets you walk free because somebody innocent has paid your fine. If you reject it, what do you think the judge is going to do to you after he killed his son? Do something to you too, try to kill you too. Oh, absolutely. Well, the Bible says that God sent who on the cross? Jesus. And what did he do to his son? For whose fault was it? His, 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 his fault. Father. Who else? Why did he kill his son? What'd you it say? Was us. It was us. It was our fault. Oh, oh, oh. Why? Because our sin did what to Jesus? Hurt him. It killed him. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to be made right, in order for you to be forgiven, you must accept what Jesus did on the cross by telling God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Mm -hmm. And if you accept what Jesus did on that cross, and I accept what your son has done, the Bible says... God will transfer Jesus' innocence to you, and he'll let you walk into heaven with no penalty. You don't have to go to hell. Why? Because Jesus paid the what? The price. He's paid the fine for you, and he's willing to let you walk free mm -hmm. if you're willing to give up your life to follow him. So it's not just asking Jesus to be your savior. It's asking Jesus to be your Lord, your boss. So a lot of people want God to save them. They just don't want to do what? They don't want to do the right thing. They don't want to obey him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Where's the last words Jesus said on the cross? You remember? It is finished. Meaning he's paid all of the debt of mankind sin and he's wanting you to turn and follow him. And if you do, he'll give you the free gift of if any eternal life. Does that make sense? That's true. What you thinking, man? Yeah, you do. What you think? Jesus said, mm hmm. That's true. He just spared you. Say like, again. Like spared you. He spared you. Gave you another yeah. chance. Gave you another chance. Mm -hmm. So right now, as it stands, let me just sum it up real quick. As it stands, you guys just admitted that you're on your way to hell because Jesus has never probably really been your Lord unless you let him take the place of your sin. And if you'll do that, man, God will give you complete grace. So if this is true, guys, when do you think you'll surrender to Jesus as your boss? When do you feel like you'll surrender everything to him? When do you think you'll do that? I hope he'll do it soon. Yeah. What would you think? So, like when? Like right now? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like right now? Mm -hmm. why, why wait? Because no. you could be in an automobile accident and you can be what? Dead. You could be dead within a matter of a few minutes. You want them do it quicker. Yeah. Statistics show that 150,000 people die every single 24 God, hours. It does. So, do. So, uh, so do you think it's something you guys want to do like standing here right now? It's just ask God to save you and I'm so sorry for what I've done. And Is this something you y'all feel like y'all want to do now or y'all want to just think about it? No, I, I want I want <laughs> no, to be no, saved. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Well, you know what? I'm gonna pray with you guys. I want I'm things. Mm -hmm. Say it again. God, I want things turn out right. Where things, you know, like you said, that yes, where things going on out here in the street that I don't yep. want things turn out wrong. I yes, want everything turn out. Absolutely. You know, you know Absolutely. What I'm mm -hmm. Correct. What you I think? Be, yes, I'm sorry. With, I want to be with Jesus. I do too. All the time. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's so great to hear. I'm so great to hear you say that. What do you think, man? The same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Well, can we? Can I just pray with you guys? And you don't. You don't have to pray out loud. All the thing you have to do is just tell God, like God, I'm sorry that I sinned against you, and I want a relationship with you. Please forgive me. Something like that. Yeah. Just ask God for mercy. And the Bible says He'll have mercy on you, even right here when you say it. Does that, does that sound okay with you guys? Yeah, Jesus, I want mercy on me. 
this evening. Right. Uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity just to meet each other here at, I think this is Burlington, Lord Jesus. Who would have ever thought that we would see each other again? But God, I remember how we used to go to church at uh, Pine Bluff at uh, Southside. And God, I, I get another opportunity to share the, the wonderful message of the gospel. I mean, Shirley mm -hmm. has already okay. just cried out to you and asked you just to save her. And, uh, man, I forgot your name again. So, Taylor, Taylor. Father, and Taylor is wanting the same thing, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you will help them. God, I pray that they will take that same message back uh, to their, uh, their family. I know they got uh, brothers and sisters, God, and moms and dads that need to hear this message. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will protect them, God, as they, they go and that. God, they will dedicate their life to you today, God, if they wouldn't wait, God, and today that they'll, they'll let you be their Lord and Savior, and, and uh, they'll, they'll surrender everything they can as best they know how to you.